Hi everyone, with me today is Florence Laverne. She served as National Campus Life Network's Ontario Coordinator for the past couple of years. And before that, she was a member of U Ottawa Students for Life. Florence, this is excellent to have you with us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. So to, to start, um, I was wondering about your personal experiences on campus, if you could tell us about the challenges and the joys that come with doing pro-life work there. Sure. Um, well, my pro-life activism, I guess, really started, or before it started, was more with um, initially learning pro-life apologetics, because I've always been pro-life. There was no question there, but I didn't um, necessarily know how to defend my position. So um, first, I, I read a number of books, um, videos, and I got training from uh, people who have you know, a lot of experience with this. And um, then we eventually started doing activism. And um, it's, it's such a powerful thing because you know, well, you feel like you're the minority because pro-choice people, it just seems like they're everywhere. And um, the, the majority of people say they're pro-choice without necessarily knowing why, it just it's their default position. So we know we're going in there and it's not like we're, you know, glorified by everybody. So it's not easy in that sense, but most people have never really thought of their position and why they say they're pro-choice. So it turns out it's actually easier um, than what we think, um, like on campus doing activism, talking to random students who've never met before and asking them of their position on the issue. So yeah, as I said, it turns out to be easier than what we think it is. Um, it seems intimidating, but at the end of the day, it's just a conversation with someone else about a topic. And um, yeah, a lot of them don't know why they say they're pro-choice, although they'll use the common arguments and slogans, but there's not much to it. So um, yeah, it's easier to reach them than we think. Um, it's some challenges or a challenge would be with like pro-life clubs, for example. Um, I don't know if that's exactly what you're getting at, but one thing that stood out all the time for me was just schedules, finding a time that worked for everybody that was involved in the club. Um, because we're all busy students on campus. We don't always have, you know, a lunch break at the same time. So just finding a time that works for everybody. But then once you nail that down, then it's just sticking to your regular weekly plan. If you're going to do some sort of campus outreach every Tuesday afternoon, then stick to that and keeping things simple, right? You pick a time that works for everybody and you do it every week. And those like regular things, that's really what makes the success. Um, for one club as opposed to like another. Um, also just some like little success stories. There are so many, but we've done so many different activities on campus and um, like at Ottawa U, for example, we did the flag display a few years ago where we plant tiny little flags um, on a big lawn on campus. And we had about, I think 10,000 flags where each flag represented 10 abortions in Canada for a total of 100,000 per year. And um, so we have this whole display the whole day. It looks amazing. People are coming, taking pictures. It's all over social media. And um, of course, people are curious, you know, what does it represent? And then we start conversations this way. Um, so there are thousands of students who see that display, but we don't get to talk to everybody. And I remember when we did that, about a year later, I met a guy on campus. And long story short, he, he was pro-life, but very quiet about it. And, yeah, just wasn't telling much. And eventually we asked him like straight up, like, okay, are you pro-life or like where, what's your position? And yeah, he's like, yeah, I, I am pro-life. I saw this thing on campus a year ago um, and I just started doing my own research. And that's, that's what changed his mind. Like we, we didn't even talk to this guy. And it was so mind blowing just to see that and to know that there was an impact. Um, I mean, I, I trusted that it was a successful campaign. Um, it was surely seen by many, many people. But to meet this guy a year later, and then I'm just wondering how many other people like him are there walking around on campus now who have a different opinion because of something we, we did. So yeah, those would be a few, uh, just a concrete example of some a success story on campus. Well, that's awesome. And I can definitely relate. Um... I, I too have had conversations and it's years later when um, I follow up with someone or they, they get in touch with me and 
Um, originally when I had the conversation with them, they were pro-choice. I never imagined that they were open to changing their mind, but you try anyway. And then, <laughs> yeah, they do their own research on their own time. Um, so I can, I can definitely hear what you're saying. Um, and you, you kind yeah, of- we plant the seeds and uh, it works out in the end. Yep, the, the pebble in the shoe. <laughs> exactly. Um, so you kind of touched on this a bit. Um, in terms of being a minority on campus, but uh, for those who are watching who haven't um, been on campus in maybe a, a couple of decades now, um, how would you compare the experience um, on college or university campuses to other environments in terms of how the pro-life argument is received and how pro-lifers are treated? Oh, good question. Um, so, in general, university campuses are very much pro-choice environments. Um, I mean, keeping in mind also that the majority or the, the age group that has the most abortions are university ages. So we know it's the most vulnerable group, which is also why we need to be present there. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, it's a very pro-choice environment. I think all universities have some sort of like women's center on campus with, you know, different resources or whatever of all sorts. Um, and um, those centers are typically funded by student unions. So it's like right into the university um, like system and how it functions. They have those things and yeah, very much pro-choice places. They're, you're not welcome to go there if you're pro-life. Like they're very upfront. Um, and like through those centers all typically have like posters or events going on. And it's very much pro-choice things and campaigns and posters in the washrooms everywhere. And so you see that all over the place um, and also like a personal experience while I was doing my master's at Ottawa U in health sciences one of my professors was very pro-choice and not just in her beliefs like she explained to us that she became a medical doctor because she wanted to be an abortion provider so I've had a few lectures from an abortionist um, obviously she was super open about her position saying how you know great it was to do work in that field um, and she was supervising a few students who were doing research in that field as well. So, um, yeah, like you feel like you're not welcome at all in certain environments. Like it depends what you're studying. Probably mathematics, you wouldn't run into these issues. Um, but more health sciences or social sciences, um, you feel like you're the minority even more. But as I said, most students, I think, on campus don't really have a strong opinion. Some do. Some are very pro-life, some are very pro-choice, but most of them are just the mushy middle. So I think the average person is very easy to reach, but the institution itself is more pro-choice than it is pro-life. So. I, again, <laughs> have been there, done that. Um, sadly, it's, it's the case kind of across Canada um, where, yeah, the average student isn't so bad, but the institution just oppresses you. <laughs> Um, so lastly, um, for the students who are watching, what advice would you have for them? Yeah, so for students, um, similar to how I got involved initially, I was just learning pro-life apologetics. That just helped me so much. I, there was no way I was going to do activism if I wasn't trained properly. I know some people that's not the case. They're just ready to get out there and um, they're going to you know, argue however they can. Um, that was not the case for me. I just needed to really know how to defend my position. So I think everybody who goes out and do some sort of activism should get some training beforehand um, just to know how to answer the common arguments that come up. And also, like, when you're doing activism or any sort of pro-life thing, actually, at that moment, you're the face of the pro-life movement. So you want to represent it well. It's not just defending your position, but it's the whole movement at that point. So. That would probably be my first advice to know things well, like read books. There are so many great books out there on apologetics, great videos on YouTube and a whole bunch of different organizations that like on their websites or they have trained staff who can go out and give training. So, yeah, that would be my first um, piece of advice. And also for students specifically, get involved, get involved somewhere if it's, you know, doing some volunteer work um, with crisis pregnancy centers or um, phone calling to try and get pro-life politicians elected um, on campus, obviously, um, you know, or even in your high school, because we should have more um, pro-life clubs in high schools too, 
And those are probably just going to start if students take on the initiative of, you know, starting that. And on campus, take a look at the website or like Facebook, try and find if there is a club on your campus. Or um, like, as I said, I worked with NCLN before, check out their website or get in touch with them and see if there is a club at the campus you're going to. If there isn't, you could be starting one. So um, get involved because also, right, that's the age demographic. That's the most vulnerable. We, we need to go out there and do something. So if you're pro-life, I would say it's not enough to just be pro-life if you're not doing anything about it. So that's like the extra step that I challenge every pro-lifer to do. Um, whether it's volunteering your time or if, if you have the means, you can donate to organizations that depend on donations to function. So there's so many ways to support the pro-life movement. And um, yeah, and I, I would like to see every single pro-lifer get involved somehow because we, we need that help. Amen, sister. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today, Florence. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.